Hello, my name is Chris Whaley. Welcome to this online class, POL 1030, which is U.S. Government and Politics. This is the first video for the course, and the purpose of this video is to explain to you how this course works, because every online class works just a little bit differently, and so this one may be different from other online courses that you've taken, uh, or if it's the first online course that you've taken, then uh, I want to explain to you what the requirements are uh, so that you can make sure this course is going to be a, a, a good fit. As we're not meeting in class, we won't have in class sessions of course, then uh, we're going to have to make up for that uh, in other things that we do. So by way of assignments and some quizzes and some things I'm going to try and get you to do to interact with one another, hopefully we'll make up for some of what we're not getting uh, by, by not being in class in other words. So let me, let me um, first of all, let's, let's talk about what, what you need to do in what order. Uh, after you finish watching this video, the very next thing you need to do is to read the syllabus for this course. Okay, please don't skip that part. Please read the syllabus. You'll find it on the momentum page. Uh, down as you scroll down through the, the front page, you will find the syllabus. It will open as a Word document. And uh, certainly, if you have any problems with that, you can contact uh, uh, CTAT, C-T-A-T, or you can contact me, and we'll get you some help with that. So read the syllabus, number one. Number two, make sure you have the textbook. It is crucial that you have the text. Uh, if that is going to be an issue, having access to the text, uh, the probably will be best for you to think about taking a different section of the course. You will be reading a chapter a week and doing some work that will require utilization of the textbook. Um, sometimes uh, students I know think that, uh, you know, and sometimes there are courses where you can get by without the text. This is not one of them. You will have to have the textbook. So uh, make sure to get that because uh, right away we're going to start reading through the material. Um, be sure that you have access to iTunes. Most of you know exactly what iTunes is. You download music through iTunes. However, if you have heard of it, and you've never downloaded it on your computer, or if you have no idea what I'm talking about, then you're going to need to Google iTunes and you're going to need to download the free iTunes application onto your computer. Okay, You do not have to pay for iTunes. Right, I would not ask you to download something that you're going to have to pay for. Uh, get the free iTunes and the lectures, uh, podcasts rather, for this course, uh, mini lectures is a better way to say it, are going to be on iTunes U. That's the university channel for iTunes. And you can Google iTunes U for university and find out more information about that. So read the syllabus, make sure you have the book, make sure you have access to iTunes on your computer. And then the fourth thing you need to do is create a blog for this class. This is something you will do outside of momentum, outside of the Roan State uh, computer system. Uh, there are any number of places for you to create a blog, uh, but um, one just for example that is used by a lot of folks is uh, Blogspot, B-L-O-G-S-P-O-T. You can again Google the word uh, blog and find all kinds of places, Blogspot and Blogger and all manner of places where you can create a blog and this is going to be required for every student because we're going to post some discussions uh, thoughts about the material that we're reading and uh, and watching and listening to as we go through this semester um, it will um, be a first for some of you I know to create a blog and it may be an intimidating thing uh, those of you who have um, uh, access to folks who have already created blogs, certainly feel free to help them uh, set up a blog for you, but you need to do that right away. Okay, So those are the things that you'll want to do and you'll want to do them very, very quickly because we will get going and, and, and uh, start out maybe a little bit uh, slowly, but we're going to pick up speed pretty quickly because we have quite a bit of material that's all important and we want to get to all of it this semester. It's a good time for me to mention to you that um, I, I tell you all this up front because uh, I'm very firm with deadlines. Uh, it is uh, something that uh, I think is incredibly important for students uh, as well as just getting out uh, in the workplace. 
to recognize the importance of deadlines. So when I set a deadline for a quiz to be due or a blog post to be due or a project to be submitted, that deadline will be firm. Uh, I do not grant extensions uh, for any reason. Um, it is therefore recommended that students start ahead of time rather than waiting until the last minute because what too often will be the case is that a student decides to wait until the day before something is due uh, or maybe even the night before and then has computer problems and will ask for an extension. Well, the remedy to that is to start ahead of time so that if you have computer problems, you'll have time to get those fixed and still have time to submit whatever is due. Because once a deadline is set, I will be very firm with this, so this is just fair warning, I will not grant extensions for any reason. That makes it fair to everybody, all right? Um, so what do those deadlines look like? What, what will we be doing each week? What would a normal week in this class look like? Well. The first thing I want you to do is to read the chapter in the text. Okay, We'll go through them in order, so that will be simple, starting with one and just moving right on up. So read the chapter first. Okay, There are going to be uh, many lectures, podcasts, if you will, in iTunes University that I've already mentioned, and these contain discussions on areas that I think are critically important or maybe things that I think you might have a little bit of difficulty understanding just through the reading. But, please hear me on this, those videos are no substitute for reading the chapter. Uh, I have students sometimes who will try to read the, uh, who won't read the chapter and will try to make it do just on the videos and they unfortunately find out pretty quickly that their grades will suffer because of that. You must read the material in the chapter, then watch the videos that I have for you, okay? After that, what I'll ask for you to do is to take a quiz located in the quizzes section of this course and those quizzes are designed basically to ensure that you've read the material, that you have that foundational information. Because if you don't have that understanding, it will be very difficult for you to move on and do the other work that we'll be doing because it requires a, a, what might be called a deeper understanding or a deeper learning of the material. So take the quiz. You can take each of those quizzes up to five times each. Uh, that way, if you feel like, well, I didn't do well on it the first time, I'd like to retake it, you can do that up to five times for each one. And however many times you want to take it, if you want to take it one time, you want to take it two, three, four, or five times, uh, the grades will be averaged. And in the end, uh, if you've taken it four or five times, then the, the four or five scores will be averaged. And that's what will be recorded for that particular quiz. And so there's a quiz for each chapter. So take the quiz and then uh, the next thing I'll be asking for you to do is to do sort of a QA. and a I want you to develop 10 questions uh, for each chapter and we'll do these one at a time. You don't need to start on, on writing questions and, and, and doing quizzes uh, uh, for you know chapters two, three. You, know, do, you won't be able to get ahead because I won't open the quizzes. So we'll do a, a chapter a week basically and so after you take the quiz for whatever particular chapter we're on, I want you to develop 10 questions that you consider uh, that cover the most important parts of that chapter the 10 most critical areas, develop 10 questions that you think would require students, if you were the teacher, uh, to cover the most important parts of that chapter. So write those questions down, type them out actually, uh, then I want you to answer those questions and post both the questions and your answers to those in the discussion section and you'll see in the discussion section in Momentum where you will upload those. Um, which you'll need to do, by the way, is Word documents. If you use WordPerfect or other word processing systems, please be aware that sometimes uh, there is difficulty in getting those loaded. Word is the safest. I'm not saying the others won't work, but from time to time we have had issues with other word processing uh, systems loading into the system. Okay? Um, then after that, uh, so you've taken the quiz then, you've done your Q&A for, for the chapter, then I'm going to ask you to uh, 
again go even a little bit deeper and we're going to try to do this as interactively uh, so that we can uh, uh, know each other's thoughts and impressions of each chapter uh, by uh, posting on the blog that I've required you to create. Uh, I will post uh, for each chapter uh, each week I'll post a question or a series of questions that I will want you to address in your blog. Again, your blog is outside the system. You'll see the assignment on Momentum, but then you go outside the system to post onto your blog. So I want you to post the response to whatever I've asked of you for that particular chapter. And then I want you to go seek out the blogs of at least three other classmates and post your reaction to what they have said about the topic. So this is our opportunity for interaction. Since we can't have actual in-class discussions, this is the way we're going to facilitate it. You're going to create a blog, you're going to post on it, and each week after you've posted on your blog, you're going to go comment on the blogs of at least three other classmates. All right? And I'll ask you to vary that. Don't always pick the same three. All right. I would also ask you to please remember we're talking a lot of times about hot button issues that drive uh, folks to uh, uh, emotional states and very understandably so. But through these responses, please don't make it personal. Just keep the discussion on the issue even though I know you feel passionately about it. And please keep it clean, of course. Okay? So that's sort of what each week is going to look like. You're going to read the chapter, you're going to watch the, the, the podcast lectures on iTunes, and they'll usually be three or four for each, each chapter. I've tried to make them no more than ten minutes or so, so that you won't have to deal with uh, you know, watching me for a, a long period of time each week. Uh, heaven knows you know, nobody wants that. Then after that, you're going to take the quiz, you're going to do your question and answer, ten questions, ten answers for the chapter, you are going to find out what the discussion uh, assignment is for the week and then you're going to respond to that on your blog as well as comment on the blogs of three of your classmates. Now, grades. Grades, as you can see in the syllabus, will be an average of the quizzes, uh, the blog posts, the discussions in other words, the question and answer, the Q&A that you're doing each week, and also for this uh, uh, class there are no exams, so to speak, but there are going to be two major projects. One will be a paper that will be based on a couple of interviews that you'll do, and the second will be a full-blown research paper that will be due at the end of the semester. For these papers, and they'll, again, there'll be two, one will be due about halfway through or midway through the term, the other will be due at the end. For these papers, uh, and I will make sure that you have you know, plenty of time to work on these because these are the major projects for the classes, for this class rather, excuse me. For the papers, you will need to have the Roan State Learning Center review them before I accept them. In fact, as evidence that you've had the papers reviewed, I'll ask you to submit uh, a draft with the corrections the Learning Center staff made along with the final copy of each paper. Sounds like a lot, I know that it is, but again, my responsibility is to make sure you understand and learn this material. And the only way I know how to do that is to try and figure out ways for us to do the things that we would do in a class setting, which works a little bit differently online. But hopefully, if you give this a chance, I think it will work out well. I hope that the videos in particular help uh, demonstrate and illustrate some of the material. And as always, please contact me if you have any questions. That is what I'm here for. Email is certainly the best way for you to reach me. Uh, and of course, you will know how to do that through the Momentum system. Thanks very much.